I'm home. Hi, Mom. Welcome to the top of the world, St. Moritz, for the final leg of the $80,000 Fiat Challenge. Hi, everyone. I'm Pat Scanlon. This international test of billiard skill has been a competitive one. Steve Miserak of the United States won the straight pool competition. And then Great Britain's Steve Davis was victorious in his country's number one game, snooker. So that sets the stage for the third and final leg, nine ball. Miserak and Davis, two world-class players, but only one will come away with first-class money of $50,000. Right now, let's join my English colleague on this broadcast, Paul McDowell, for a look behind the scenes at the Miserak and Davis camps. The managers, Barry Hearn and Karen Miserak, who also happens to be Steve's wife. How important is this challenge match for you? It's always important to win. I don't, you know, there's no point in entering anything if you don't win. I've got to be realistic and say that Mizrak is a heavy favourite with two pool disciplines and only one snooker. But it's important if the American markets and understand and appreciate a little bit more about the talents of someone like Steve Davis. The, the, the possibilities for our game on the back of Steve's success could be enormous. I've been watching you sitting in the hall watching Steve play. Now, what sort of things go through your mind? What do you think when he misses? Oh, I cringe. <laughs> and while he's playing, I sit there with my fingers crossed and I pray a lot. <laughs> In fact, for the straight pool, I usually keep score. And I started keeping score. And then when Steve Davis won the first game, I was just a total wreck. I couldn't keep score anymore. And I just had to go into my normal procedure of crossing the fingers. <laughs> Which Steve is it going to be? Well, you know, you have to fancy Miserec. Uh, and two pool disciplines to one snooker. But, uh, you know, the ginger fella's getting the hang of this game. I wish we'd, uh, it's always if only, if only we'd had a few more days. And with Steve's schedule, it's totally impossible. I mean, he's been training hard since he's been here. But like Mizrach's been playing the game for 40 years. So he's got just that slight edge. It may take Davis another week before he could beat him. But you never know, he might spring a surprise in the last leg. They say in America that Steve Mizrach is the man who loves to show off. Does he oh, show off at home? Definitely. He's just a natural. I'm not saying it because he's my husband, it's just because this is it, it's a fact that Steve, what he does when he does an exhibition or anything regarding pool, he's just a natural with the crowd, he has such a good rapport with the crowd, better than anyone I could think of in the United States. He's just the top man in that field and he loves it and thrives on it. <laughs> is he going to win the big challenge match? Of course, is there any doubt? <laughs> Now I'd like to explain a little bit about the simple game called nine ball. But first, I'd like to show you the balls. They're racked in diamond shape with the one on top, the nine in the middle. We have all different numbered balls from one to nine in any order. The game does not start until you hit the one. That's why it is on top. So let me hit the one and start the game. All balls pocketed on the break count. If a ball is pocketed, the player keeps shooting. Now we have to go in numerical order, starting from the yellow ball, going in numerical order all the way to the nine ball. For camera's sake, we'll shove this one in the hole. <laughs> Now, the two ball, the blue ball in this pocket. We come over on the opposite side of the table and we make the three, the red ball in this pocket. Come back over. And this shot, we can pocket the four, we can pocket the eight, or we could pocket both balls at one time. Now we shoot the five, the orange ball in the upper corner. Now, we don't have a straight in shot. So what we have to do is bank the seven ball off this cushion into this pocket and play position for the yellow ball to go into this pocket. It's a very simple shot. We put the cue ball right here. But the game can end even quicker by this happening. When the two ball 
and the nine ball wind up like this, or a lowered numbered ball. Play a combination, or a cannon in British terms. Just like that. Very simple, and that's how the game is played. and the accolade of Supreme Cue Master of the World. The game is nine ball. It's the best of five sets. Each set consists of nine games. Our match referee is Len Ganley. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final of the Fiat Challenge. Our two players will string for break. But first, from England, our four times world champion, Steve Davis. <laughs> And from the United States of America, three times world champion at pool, Steve Miserek. Pat Scanlon and Rex Williams here at the Palace Hotel in St. Moritz. Rex, our expert commentator, the chairman of the World Pro Billiard and Snooker Association. The two players have just lagged or stringed, as it's called in Great Britain, Rex. Yes, we call that uh, stringing for break, lagging for break in the, the United States. And of course, uh, Miserak has won the lag, and he will have the choice of break. Steve he will Miserak. Thank you, 42 gentlemen. years old from Edison, New Jersey. We'll His opponent, Steve Davis, 29 years old from Romford, England. They'll play the game of nine ball. One would think that Miserak is favored in this event. But it was Davis who demonstrated an ability as a shot maker in straight pool and perhaps can surprise. Yes, well, straight pool, of course, is the most difficult uh, game of pool. And as expected, uh, Miserak did eventually run out a winner, but... Uh, as you say, Pat, uh, Steve Davis did surprise him and actually won the first game. And it's uh, Mizrak who's uh, breaking. The object is to strike the one ball at the top of the diamond. And Mizrak pocketed the nine ball on the break. Game to Mizrak. First game of the set. Steve Mizrak. And that, my friends, is how it's done quickly. Steve Davis blinked. I think he missed it, Rex. I think we should explain to the uh, British audiences, uh, Pat, that uh, providing that you hit the ball on, which is the one ball to uh, start, if the nine ball goes in, the game is immediately won. And that is a very, very, very uh, rare occurrence. The object is strike the one ball on the break. And at that point, the object to sink the balls in ascending order. One through nine. Second and the game. winner right of the game is the person that pockets the nine ball. And he also breaks again. This time, Miserak does not oh. sink the nine ball. But he does pocket the four. And of course, uh, having uh, potted a ball, even though he played the one ball, the four ball went in, he still continues, but he must now play the one ball. The one ball, the solid yellow ball, the upper left portion of your screen. So it's the one ball, and they've got to be played in sequence. One ball. Now Ms. Rack will go after the two ball, which is a dark blue ball. And of course, it is possible to play a combination shot. Ms. Rack, as long as he strikes the object ball first, this being the two ball, if he could drive the two ball into the nine ball and pocket the nine, that is a winning shot as well. Miserak does not have to call his pocket. Didn't have a good shot at the two ball. Well, it was a good shot, actually, because he's uh, played a, a safety shot, and this is where the tactics will come in, and this is the way that the thing that Davis will really have to feel his way, because he won't understand the tactics in nine ball, 
as Mizrak didn't really understand the tactics in snooker. So, uh, disadvantage to Davis. Davis. Davis, the number one snooker player in the world now, will try to decipher an American game. He's shooting the two ball. Slices it nicely into the pocket. The next ball, the three ball, which is red. Three ball just to the right of the uh, cue ball. The four ball, of course, is the one that follows that. And that, of course, was pocketed on the break. So, therefore, he goes on to the five ball after this three ball. Three ball. Davis thinks the three ball. Now he'll go to the five, which is the orange-colored ball, right next to the cue ball. And he didn't play a good shot there, Davis. It was interesting, uh, Pat, uh, on the start of this game that um, Miserac used a different cue, and that was because he can get more power into the shot with the cue that he wanted to break the balls with. The object at the break is to explode the balls and hope that one or two go in. And it worked for Miserac in the first game as he pocketed the nine ball on the opening break. He'll be playing the five ball into the corner pocket. Five ball. Next up for Miserac, the green ball, the six. The one on the right-hand cushion, or the rail, as you would say, in the United States. Down to the corner pocket. And a nice shot there. Six ball. And also the ball, again, the purple ball, which is uh, into the corner pocket, the seven ball. Eight ball into seven the ball. corner pocket. And he'll be drawing the cue ball back for the nine ball. So this is the black ball, the eight ball. And Miserac looking very much at home playing nine ball. He'll take the nine ball now. This to win the second game of the first set. Nine ball in second game. So Steve Miserac, a four-time U.S. Open champion. Wins the second game. The first player to win five games will take the set. Best of five sets, rather. Miserac wins the first two games. First player to reach five games will take the set. It's a best of five set. So it's the first player that can win three of the five sets that will. Third game. With the match. Miserac using a 21 ounce pool cue. Picks up a ball off the break. Seven ball. He pockets the seven ball. So now he will switch cues and go after the one ball, the yellow ball. The solid yellow ball is the one ball. He can't do anything with this, but he will play a safety shot to try and put Davis into trouble. He can only, I think he can just clip the outside of the one ball. No, he's obviously uh, snookered on that, so he's got to go around the table. And Steve plays it safe. Every day, Jack... This challenge, which was snooker. Yes, th this is... Uh, a strange game at nine ball. It, potting and position plays a great part, but also a very tactical game. Didn't play a good shot there, Davis. Tried to get the cue ball up behind the other ball to uh, leave. He didn't hit a shot And just a question there, Davis not absolutely and sure what happened there. Anyone yes. A foul stroke call, so I didn't actually see what happened, but I think that neither ball could have been driven to the cushion. Well, he did not drive the one ball to the cushion, so now Miserac gets the cue ball on hand and sets up an easy shot. One ball. As he pockets the one, he'll play to the two ball, the blue ball. The reason we're going into so much detail, of course, Rex, is an international telecast. Many people not familiar with the game of nine ball. 
one would expect uh, Mizrak to uh, take this game from this position. Well, he plays a, a plant there onto the aid ball. Of course, providing that you hit the ball on, if you pot another ball, that is a fair shot. And Davis will now play a similar shot, playing this ball onto the aid ball. Eight ball. And now can come back for the three, which is red. Davis, of Three course, ball. now goes to the f four ball, the purple ball. Of course, the cue he's playing with is much heavier than the normal snooker cue he would use. The snooker cue just 16 and a half ounces. Four ball. Also playing on a much smaller table, Rex. Now Davis trying to decipher the strategy. Yes, he's got to get around the table now, the nine ball is the final ball to be potted, so he's got to get round the, the table to leave position on the six ball, which is at the bottom end of the table, after potting this five ball. And that's a bad shot there from Davis. That has certainly cost him this game. Miserak steps up to the table now. 1982 Player of the Year in the United States. Three-time world champion. Doesn't make many mistakes at this game. Five ball. Sinks the five ball. Draws the cue ball back. Now for a shot of the six ball in the side pocket. Six ball. That's a good shot because they're not easy to pot into these uh, center pockets. So it's the nine ball to win this game. Nine ball. Miserak making easy work of it. Winning the third game of this first set. The Fiat Challenge. Miserak took the straight pool competition. Davis took the snooker competition. And now it all comes down to nine ball. The winner will walk away with $50,000. The runner up, $30,000. And he scratched. So now Davis will take the cue ball in hand. Difficult transition, I imagine, for Davis, having to play an American game of straight pool, going back to his favorite game of snooker, then One having ball. to go back to a smaller table, the bigger balls. Interesting shot Davis has played here. He's played for the two ball. He's knocking it onto the nine ball to win the game. Game. Some nice shot making by Steve Davis. So Davis gets back in this first set. It's now 3-1, Steve Miserak and Davis will get a chance at breaking. Good shot that Davis played there. Actually saw the opportunity that he could play on position onto that two ball. And providing that you play the ball on, which was the two ball for Davis there, knocking onto the nine ball, you win the game. So Davis spotted that very quickly. Miserak and Davis have been great sports throughout this competition and both helping one another with the foreign rules. Fifth game? Yes, it's been played in tremendous Davis spirit, this competition. Davis is asking Steve now, I have to hit the one Anywhere ball, right? Anywhere you want. And Davis will find difficulty in getting the same power into the shot that Miserak does. Well, he spreads them out nicely but he doesn't pocket anything on the opening break. So now, Miserak takes over, leading three games to one. Yes, and the balls are very nicely split open uh, here, Pat, and I would think that Miserak should clear the table and win the game. The balls are perfectly placed, just a little stun on this ball. One ball. The two ball, the blue one in the center of the table is next, but the cue ball, has got a little bit near to that side cushion, and it's making it a bit difficult now, having to get under the ball. And yeah, Miserak, who's had trouble with that side cushion at times, in the side pocket, misses. Davis will play a safety shot here. I would think he'll play onto the blue, send the blue back up the table. Of course, this competition, a best of five sets, player needs five games to win a set. 
Davis looking at a rather ambitious shot to play off the cushion and try and pocket the blue ball. I think it would be better to play a safety shot behind the, the black and the nine ball, which is the side of it. And uh, I think that that's uh, something that the Davis must do in this match. I would suggest that that was uh, a little bit reckless, that the shot that Davis played there, and Mizrak has had one great opportunity in this game so far. This is his second one, and you can't afford to give a player like Mizrak two perfect chances. Three ball. ball next. Two ball has been potted, that was the blue ball. Three ball now into the corner pocket, the red one. The four ball is lying on the top cushion Three or ball. the top rail and he'll play that onto the six ball and pocket the six ball providing you play the ball on that's the purple ball the four ball pot another ball that's a fair shot six ball now he pots the four ball now he's got a puppy as they say in the u.s rex easy shot sinks the four, four and ball. draws it back five into the center that's the orange ball and the six ball, of course, has been potted. So Five ball. the seven ball, which is to the left of the cue ball, just playing it with little side to come back onto the eight ball, which is the black one. And that's, a, Mistake. that's an incredible miss by Mizrak. So they've both, he can't believe it. Screw back now for Davis onto the eight ball. Seven ball. Seven ball potted. The eight ball is the black one. That's the black ball that we're very familiar with in Britain because all the pool that is played in Britain is eight ball. Screwing it back now for the nine ball, which is the one that matters. Almost eight disaster, ball. but uh, he can pot it without any problem into the corner pocket. Nine ball and game. And so Davis wins his second game of the first set. Miserak left the door open. Davis took advantage with some nice shot making. And now Miserak leading by just a game, 3-2. Steve Davis will break. Davis, of course, has won 46 major tournaments, including the Coral UK Championship, his first in 1980. At 29 years old, he is the highest paid sportsman in all of England. Yes, he's had a remarkable career. In fact, he's been ranked number one in the world since 1981. And uh, you can imagine the type of pressure that that puts on a man to Six just hold that number one he position. And Davis is taking to this game nicely. Foul. But he's scratched. So now Miserak can take the cue ball in hand. He has respotted the one ball and the other ball that was pocketed by Davis on that scratch. So now Miserak will have to play the one ball. Can only play a safety. And he does. And he played to uh, Snooker Davis behind the green ball. That's the six ball. I'm not sure if Davis can just get at that one ball. It's very tight. It may just be able to clip the outside of the one ball, but the problem is keeping it safe. And yes, he does get at it, but he scratches. So now Miserak will get the cue ball in hand, leading three games to two, first game of the set. Miserak, a picture of concentration here. So Miserak, because this is not the opening stroke, the game is in progress, he can place the cue ball anywhere he likes on the table after the foul stroke, or the scratch, as you call it, in the States. And he's played the one ball onto the four ball. And he now is still back on the one ball. The blue ball is just to the right of the, left of the 
cue ball into the center pocket now. And Mizrak will play the two. The three ball is down towards the corner pocket. Three ball. And he potted the four ball because it made it easy for him to pot this three ball and leave the five ball, which is next to it. Didn't have to play anything three ball. very difficult as far as position is concerned. Now, that's something that I've only just spotted, and Davis wouldn't have spotted it had he been playing, and that just shows the experience of this man. And Davis, of course, will have spotted that himself now and realized why Mizrak played it like that. Five ball. It's interesting, the way this challenge was set up, straight pool definitely favoring Mizrak, snooker favoring Davis, but this is a game that Davis does have a chance at. Yes, I still make Mizrak favorite, but certainly got more chance at this than he has at straight pool. Ball. And he's been doing a lot of practice, Steve Davis, at the nine ball. And he's, uh, the seven ball is the one that is between the two balls, and he hasn't gone far enough. Can't pot it. Needed to come back up the table a little bit further to get at it, so now can only play a safety shot. Can't pot this ball. And it's not easy to play a safety shot. Miserak uh, plays the combination. Pulls one out of the back pocket. Well, that was a great shot. Of course, being a snooker player myself, I didn't spot that uh, shot. That's where Davis will also have problems. Eight he takes ball. the eight and sets himself up for the nine ball. Nine ball and ten. Miserak has it. He now leads four games to two over Steve Davis. Len Ganley will now set about racking the nine balls, positioning them in a very tight diamond. Well, that was uh, a remarkable shot that uh, Mizrak played to cannon the ball off the cushion, off the other ball into the corner pocket, and win the, the game from a position that uh, certainly I didn't see. And I'm sure that most snooker players would, would not have seen that. Now Miserak is one game away from winning the first set. And he's got the nine ball on the break. Steve Miserak wins the first set. 5-2 over Steve Davis. And the power that Miserak gets into that opening uh, shot is absolutely incredible. Welcome back to the Fiat Challenge. Steve Miserak one set up in the nine ball. He went on to win the second set to lead 2-0. In the third set, Steve Davis looked much more comfortable at the table. We're going to join it now with the scores level at three games each. Remember, Davis needs to win this set to stay in the match. Then Ganley just... Uh calling the the ball that was potted there just for the benefit of the British audiences and of course many questions asked before this match here at the Palace Hotel the folks here not familiar with nine ball as well Zarak using the bridge to get at the one playing the snooker again you see not taking any risks at all, and he's got Davis in trouble again here. And this is getting to a very critical time in this match. Davis certainly can't afford to let Miserak win this next game. He's got to win this set to stay in the match. Trailing two sets to none. Breaks the one ball out. And uh, will Mizrak have a go at just snicking this ball into the corner pocket? It's, must be a very fine cut. Doesn't look easy to play a safety shot. A 
That's a very good shot. Two ball is on the side cushion, the blue ball. Playing it into the same pocket. Two Three ball. ball into the other corner pocket. The four ball, of course, has been potted from the opening shot, so it's now the five ball, which is the orange ball. Ms. Rack looking very confident. And uh, the six ball into the other corner pocket, the top corner pocket, bringing the cue ball back up the table. It's the seven ball, which is on the string line, or the ball line, as we would call it. Six ball. So certainly, Ms. Rack is going to go into a four games to three lead in this third set. Seven ball. As we would... As we would say in Britain, Pat, it's like shelling peas. Making it look easy. Eight ball. Well, Miserac is certainly doing that now. One ball away from a... Nine ball and victory, seven and Miserac here. has it. He's Nine won seven. four games to three. In this third set, Miserac just one game away from a victory in the Fiat Challenge. Miserac, with a victory today, would earn $50,000. Of course, $30,000 to the runner-up. Davis, that... wondering if he'll get off the chair. Well, $30,000 is not bad for finishing second hey, in the two-horse race, is it? Yes, sir. Not a bad payday <laughs> for three days' work. And Sam Moritz also. This is the third leg of the Fiat Challenge. The first leg, straight pool, won by Miserac. The second competition, snooker, which Davis won. And here we are, playing nine ball. Steve Miserac, the guy in the United States, known for just showing off. Trying to spread them out and pockets two balls off the break. Eight ball. Miserac. And one ball. It was made famous, Rex, by a 30-second beer commercial which he did a trick shot, and it changed his life. Up until that point, he had been a world billiards champion, but didn't have the fame and celebrity. At one point, he was a seventh grade history teacher at George McGinnis School in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. But he misses the shot at the two. He was a bit disappointed with that one because he potted the one ball and the eight ball from the break, and he would have liked to have finished the match off without letting Davis get back to the table. So Davis, at the point of no return, can't afford any more mistakes. He has to win this game to stay alive. Davis, the top snooker player in the world, playing an unfamiliar game, lost the first two sets, finds himself trailing here in the third, four games to three. The man that looks after Steve Davis, Barry Hearn, his manager. I think one would have to say, Pat, that this has been a very entertaining tournament. And personally speaking, as chairman of my association, I hope that this is the forerunner of many more similar type challenge matches between our two countries. Of course, your organization Good being the World Pro Billiard and Snooker Association. And it really has been interesting, as both players had their moments playing in the other's game. Davis played well for a stretch at straight pool, and Miserac, in fact, did, demonstrated an ability at snooker. I think they both played uh, well at uh, games which are very unfamiliar to them, and it's been played in tremendous spirit. An instance of two world-class players rising to the occasion. But Davis is not dead yet. Let's not write him off yet. Five ball. Davis has no doubt had Six many ball. pressure situations in snooker competition. Yes, indeed. He's, uh, he's come back from the dead before and uh, finished up winning. Now he only needs the nine ball to draw even in this third set.
course, one does not reach the world finals every year since 1983 by folding under pressure. And Davis makes the nine, nine ball, ball and even third this third set at four games apiece. Don't nail the coffin shut yet. <laughs> Well, that was a good performance there from Steve because every shot must have been a pressure shot. And uh, he's very pleased with himself now. It would be very nice if he could win this game and uh, make it two sets to one. And he's got to really, really now hammer again, this first he ball. He's got to get one from the break. Doesn't want this rack to get to the table. One goes in. Two ball. Looked like the two ball, yes. Referee Len Ganley acknowledges. Now he must come back after the one. That's a good shot. One ball. Davis feeling more at home. Just dropping the three ball into the center. Or he could even take it into the corner pocket. We're so used to playing him into the center pocket or the side pocket, as you call it, but Side box on American pool tab is a little bit more difficult. And he just Three ball. not uh, prepared to take the risk into the center. However, the snooker table does have the smaller pockets. Yes, but uh, strangely enough, the, uh, the side pockets on the pool tables, uh, we find them rather difficult because of the cut of the pockets. The way the cushions extend from the pocket. Four ball. Davis. Looking stronger. Five ball. The six ball is tied up by the uh, nine ball, but obviously the way he played that, he can pot it. Six ball. Now he's got to uh, pull the cue ball back a little bit on this seven ball to get onto the eight ball, which is by the triangle. Seven and ball. he's certainly going to win this set. This is a great recovery from Davis. Eight ball. Now the nine ball for Steve Davis. He's nine got ball. it. Third he's got the game in the third set. So Davis on the scoreboard. Cuts Miserak's lead to two sets of to one. Best of five and Davis quite happy with himself. So Davis back in the tournament. In the fourth set, Miserak went out to a 4-0 lead, and we join Game 5 with Davis needing to win to stay in this challenge match. Three ball. Miserak pockets the three ball on the break. And the five. As proficient as Steve Miserak is, he can win this game, set, and match on any stroke. He could win it from this position. He's got to get the two, the two ball, which is right on the bottom rail. So he's got to screw the cue ball right back up the table. Miserak takes the one, but will he scratch? Yes! So now Davis with new life. Davis, his back against the wall, trailing four games to none. He's playing to pop the nine ball. He's playing the plant the combination. Well done, Steve. Davis picking up nine ball quickly, wins his first game, but still trails four games to one here in the fourth set. Steve Davis won the sixth game as well to trail 4-2 and needed to win the next three games if he was to retain any hope of winning this challenge match. And that has been a problem for Davis. He's had difficulty on the break. Miserak, of course, won two games with just one shot, pocketing the nine ball on the break. That happening in the first set. Played the safety uh, there, Miserak, but uh, hasn't uh, managed to snooker Davis or get the one ball absolutely safe. He can cut this one ball in 
but he can't get onto the two ball. The two ball is uh, tied up by the eight ball. Just trying to work it out. Mizrak has not left Davis with an easy shot. Playing the safety shot. So Davis drawing on his expert as a snooker player. Davis giving Mizorak a, a lesson in English, moving the shoulder. I think Davis can get, just get around the ball there to uh, hit the one ball. And then Gowney keeping a very close watch on the proceedings. I think one should say what a tremendous job Len Gowney has done with the pool games. He's not familiar with them and he's really Handled them well, very well indeed. He's a great snooker referee, but uh, I think he's done very well on the pool. Of course, in the straight pool, there was an instance over a rule interpretation which Ganley made correctly. <laughs> uh, Davis, under a technical interpretation of the rule, would have misplayed the ball he was calling. Miserak turned around and said, is that the ball you were calling? playing and Davis said yes he said Mizrak said go ahead Steve yes that was very sporting and that's nice to see and uh, that happens in snooker all the time it's very nice to see it also happens with the poor players this is interesting so Mizrak allowing Davis the opportunity of placing the cue ball <laughs> that will do him the best Davis didn't realize that uh, you could do that. It was a, an intentional well, foul, and uh, he gave uh, Davis the option of placing the cue ball anywhere he likes, but he pushed the other balls in a very difficult position so that if Davis does pot the one ball, which he will do, it's difficult for him to uh, do anything with the two ball. There again, uh, and uh, Davis's mind that... Uh, <laughs> Davis's mind at snooker works like a computer, but I think at this game he's allowed to blow a fuse. Steve Davis demonstrating the personality that has made him such a success in Great Britain. Now he'll call for the bridge. Davis trailing four games to two. He cannot allow Miserac to win another game in this set. Can he win the next three games One. to even the nine ball competition at two sets apiece? Took a risk there. So now Steve Miserak, one game away from victory. Davis wondering if he did the right thing. Miserak will play the two. Two ball. Brings it back to shoot the three. Three ball. Four ball down the rail, the ball side of the table. Four ball. And it's Miserak on the march. Five ball. And he should win the match from this position. Five ball. Six ball lying right over the center pocket, just Pull it back a little bit to leave an angle on the seven ball. Six ball. 
I'm sure he would like to have pulled back a little bit further than that. But being a left-hander, he can uh, get over the tail without any problem at all. Ms. Rank, glancing up at the score. By now he is aware he needs to win this game for the set and the match. Mizorak has won four U.S. Open titles, three World Pocket Billiards Championships, and it looks like he's one shot away from $50,000. I can smile now. Mizorak looking at the nine ball with Davis looking on. And Mizorak pockets the nine ball. Game set and the Fiat Challenge to Steve Mizorak. Defeating Steve Davis by games to two in this fourth and deciding set. Steve accepting congratulations from wife and managers Karen Miserak. So Steve Miserak wins the Fate Challenge trophy after three events. But I think you'll agree we have to congratulate both players on their sportsmanship, their good humor, and those delightful moments of skill. To make the presentation of the Fate Challenge trophy, Here's Mr. Lazaro of Fate UK. Mr. Mizrak, I against the world, and you can't name it. Blame a band with a name like that for writing a song called this. <laughs> 